this photo is one that I took at a location called Crookhaven Heads in Australia. As you can see, it was quite a, a wet day, some really big waves. In fact, I think when I took this photo, I was, I was sheltering in a cave because it was just um, pelting down with rain. When painting a scene like this, one of the key things to work on is to preserve the whiteness of these waves and the foam and to look at the edges, the edge variation where you get a hard dark edge into a soft lighter edge or on this side where we have a sharp edge um, with a, a very light colour against a dark colour. The other thing to work on is to, is to maintain this feeling of wetness and, um, and white water flowing all over these rocks. I've cropped this photo so that I don't need to make any um, compositional changes other than possible slight colour adjustments as I go along. Hi, my name is Joe Cartwright. Welcome to my studio. My aim with these videos is to help you paint better watercolours. And remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed of each new video I produce. So first line is our horizon line. And the main thing with that, don't make it too strong a line because it's going to be uh, lost into the sky because of all the, the rain that's um, occurring. But also you need to make sure that this line is parallel to the bottom of the paper or parallel to the top of the paper. There we go. And that's pretty good. Let's bring this up just a fraction. Before we do our first wash, I need to thoroughly wet the back of this paper. Uh, today I'm using Rough uh, Archer's uh, 185 GSM paper. So I'll just get some clean water. And this will help the paper expand and, and then flatten out. In the future I'll produce a video on just why this technique works and what's good about it, where you would use it and where you probably wouldn't use it. Just let that sit there. My normal process with 185 GSM weight paper is to wet it a couple of times. Then I start mixing my paints. Then I'll wet it again before I start actually painting and then I wet it uh, with the board as well. So right now you can see how it's starting to um, buckle here and that just tells you that there's more moisture that it can absorb. Now here's the photo we're working on and, and obviously it's a, it's a very wet day. Um, the sky is more of a grey and the water is a, a greeny blue colour. Um, I might add a little bit more blue to it in the distance just to help um, add to that feeling of space. So we'll start with our sky first. And I don't need a lot of that. I'm going to start with some cobalt blue. The main thing to notice is that the sky is still, even though it's a very overcast, the sky is still lighter than the water. If you turn around this way, it's probably more obvious. So don't go too strong with your sky colour. So just some cobalt blue. 
and I'm going to add some burnt sienna to that and that gives us a nice grey colour Get some more water I must have had some of the green spill over into my burnt sienna uh, which is why the sky's gone a little green at the moment so I'm adding some permanent rose just to cancel that out uh, but I don't want it to be too pink because it's, that would be too warm for the sky so I'll just add some more blue a little bit more brown just to, to grey that off and now I've produced just a slightly bluey grey colour okay so that's the sky and then for the water which is a, it's quite a big shape and we're going to paint the water all in one go and now I'm going to start with French ultramarine and remember you don't have to stick exactly to these colours right um, as I said I'm going to add a little bit more blue um, not so much green for this composition so French ultramarine some burnt sienna Just, I put some fresh paint in there recently and it hasn't dried yet so I have to make allowances for that and we'll add some cobalt turquoise because it does have a slight greenish tint to it and a bit more French ultramarine and just a little bit of burnt sienna I was happy with the colour there but the tone is still a bit light so I'm adding more paint I'll give it one more coat of water I find this gator board absorbs just a small amount of moisture. If anything, it sort of helps keep the, the, the back of the painting damp. I suspect in the end it'll probably kill the gator board, however. So now the board's sitting nice and flat and um, it's cool to touch which tells me there's plenty of moisture um, in the paper but nothing at the top and that's critical because if, if the top is wet I can't create the broken edges for the foam and it's absolutely critical that I preserve these white areas for the foam. I start with a fully loaded brush.
There we go. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of water on my brush. Now this, so now what I do is I use the side of the brush, tap it on a towel just to take out um, you know, probably three quarters of the moisture and just then use the side, just little dabs like that, push strokes to start creating some broken edges which will give us the impression of the foam. There we go. There. I'm going to add just a, another stroke or two of the paint up here just to darken the top a little bit. There we go. Great. Now we'll go straight into the sea. We'll establish that distant line as a soft edge. So I'm painting just into the sky, just a fraction. There we go. Then we'll come forward. And we can leave a little bit of foam in the distance just to add to that feeling of stormy weather. and some quick brush strokes to leave some of the white um, still showing. Okay. I'll clean most of the moisture out of my brush and then I'm going to come back in here just soften some of those edges. This is more of a sharp broken edge so I might need a bit more moisture here. Just a bit more paint. Hardly touching the paper. I'm trying to create an interesting pattern at the edge. Good. And here, uh, let's I'll add a little bit more paint. Th this area, the watercolour has been diluted, so it's lighter, and also you can just see a hint of the brown of the rock coming through so I'll pick up some of this colour, a little bit of water and just a hint of the burnt sienna. We'll run that, maybe just a tad more burnt sienna. Maybe a little bit more water. There. A 
Here we go. Let's put on. Because these rocks would be under the under the water, obviously, and um, and there'd be areas where you could see some of them. And barely touching the paper, just gently bring it down as you're moving the brush. That'll do. So the sky is fine, slowly bringing this water around here and not allowing that leading edge to dry too much or, or we'll get a, a quite a, a distinct hard edge where we don't want it. I'll get a clean brush and this is going to be a soft edge, so I'll just soften that now. In fact, I'll bring some more of this paint. Again, you're not going to you, you're not going to capture every little mark. Um, watercolor just doesn't do that. I'm trying to capture the essence of the the scene. There we go. Now, some of the things you can do, um, if we look at the the photo, you can see how there's little bits of um, foam shooting up. You can just see the water through them, or a more defined shape here. Um, you can sometimes you can achieve that by just leaving a mark as you're painting. Other times you can achieve that by getting a, a clean brush and maybe lifting some of that paint. Maybe here, we'll just lift a little bit of that. And then here if you you could also get a towel, a tissue, sorry, um, just scrunchle it up so that it's, it's a bit crinkly but not a tight wad and, and you just gently lift some of that paint and you need to keep moving your um, tissue around, otherwise if you keep using the same spot, it stops absorbing any moisture. And that's really about it. We don't need a lot of that. Okay, so this is that leading wave and then the, the wave goes, gets a bit greener as it comes forward. So I'm going to add some more cobalt turquoise. And this is Winsor & Newton cobalt turquoise. I'm going to add just a little bit of um, aureolan just to make that wave just a hint greener. And I've got some um, viridian here, in fact I might grab some of that. That's better. Viridian's just a little bit brighter green than the cobalt turquoise and it's lovely for these areas where the the um, wave is still quite transparent. Add a little bit more of this. There we go. And I'll start by taking most of the moisture out of my brush and while looking at the photo just trying to capture the feel of that leading edge of this foamy wave. There we go. There's a bit of foam running along the side here, so we'll just do some quick brush marks for that. Go back into that paint, and now we fill in the non-foamy areas. And 
then here we've got some of these just little bits of foam sitting on top of the water. I don't, I'm not going to try and paint every little shape. We use the brush to drag some of that paint down and, um, and leave some white bits. The main thing is to get the angles right. Here we go. Now I'm going to make this a little bit stronger, it's just too light. There we go. And as we get down here again, some there's a hint of brown starts to appear because of the um, the rocks under the under the water. So we'll just drop some of that. Weak burnt sienna in with whatever green was still on my green watercolour. Um, what was still on my brush. There we go. Get a bit more water. So I'm looking at the photo as I paint and looking for areas that are lighter in tone. If they're lighter, I'll just add more water to my mixture. Now, if you haven't wet the back enough or if this is starting to dry, this is where you have to keep your spray bottle handy to um, keep the surface area workable. But because I'm always working in the, this leading edge, I, I don't have to rush that much. Um, you know, because I'm not going to go back into this area. If I go back into this area right now, before it's dead dry, uh, I can ruin it. Again, I'll try to establish the, the edge of this wave. I can always go back in later and, and, and fill it in, but I, this edge is a broken edge. You don't want it to be too sharply defined. I'll use the point of the brush just to just to slightly mark it mark this in and then I'll fill in the gaps and then also break that edge up with some quick brush strokes.
a little bit more uh, viridian. Looks like a bit more green in this area. A little burnt sienna as well. lots of foam so wherever there's lots of foam just you just want quick dry brush strokes in the direction the wave and foam is moving. Also note where it's lighter and darker in tone and adjust accordingly. Let's keep this leading edge moving along a bit. A bit more viridian. Tiny bit of burnt sienna just so it's not too bright. Maybe a bit more burnt sienna. This is just the foam around the edge of the rock. A bit more burnt sienna, a bit more water. More burnt sienna, very weak, very watery. This is where we see the rocks underneath the water. Now before that dries I'll go around and fix up some of these edges. There's a nice little foam line there. There's just a little bit of foam coming over here. Again the brush is not bouncing to a point so it's not overloaded with moisture. There. 
and then a lot just dilute that by dipping the brush in some water. Because the wave's not going to be white, you know. It will have some white bits in it, but it also has lots of little shadow areas and reflected light and things like that. That's not bad. Now, clean the brush and then some of these areas here, you can see how they're sort of softer edges um, because of all the foam that's breaking up as it hits the bottom of the wave. come back later and add some more paint if I want but it's a lot harder to to um, to remove it this area has a, a bit of a shadow in it because of the waves breaking over it um, sometimes I'll come back in later and do that add that um, once all this area is dried to see how it looks when I finish all these other adjustments. This is broken. If you drop too much water in, you'll create like a mini cauliflower, and when you do that, you'll you just have to very quickly soak up that moisture. I want this to be a bigger bigger white area so I'm just using a tissue just a tiny bit of moisture in it There's a lot of foam which I'm not going to put in just yet. Just but that foam softens a lot of these edges. So let's just soften that. Yeah. This area could be more broken edges. Let's just throw in some more foam there. Then here is just a, it's a weak grey, slightly browny green grey colour. Very light because of all the bubbles. You can't see all the bubbles, but that's what's causing the lightness and the fact that it's fairly shallow there as well. All right, and right now this is, I've got this left as a hard edge, but I really want the leading edge to be quite soft. So I'll get my tissues again, dip the 
tissue into water and then squeeze most of the moisture out and we'll come back I should have softened these edges while the sky and the water was still damp but sometimes you forget and um, using the damp tissue is a good way to retrieve some of those soft edges. I'm going to use my wet brush and just alter the shape up here and soften these edges at the same time. We can now start adding some form to this uh, spray. Remember this is the whitest area which we want to try and uh, preserve. In this area you can, you can see through it, so you can see some of the rocks, so you can see some of the water in the distance. Leave a little bit of the leading edge white. There we go. It's maybe a bit more water. Don't want that to be so dark. Add a hint of burnt sienna for this spray down here. Again, dilute that. Don't want it to be too strong. shadow areas down here. pick up some of this blue grey sky colour. Remember before I said this part of the wave has got a bit of shadow on it where the, the foam um, comes over the leading, you know, the, the actual surface of the water. So I'll just add a hint of that here. Here too. Maybe underneath. There we go. I'll just clean my brush. 
take out most of the moisture and then just soften that edge. Because I don't have a lot of paint here, I'm highly unlikely I'm going to muddy up the, the, uh, the surface. That'll do. That'll do. And I think that will do us for this stage. Um, once this is dry, we'll come back and paint all the rocks and a few finishing touches. So the water has, has dried. It's still a little bit damp, so I have to be careful that I don't spill water on it or that I paint up to it with you know, very watery washes, but it should be dry enough for me to keep, um, uh, to finish this painting. So now I'm going to paint the rocks and they're all a, a, a dark colour. In fact, they're all leaning to the brown with a little bit of um, very dark brown in areas and other lighter areas and a little bit of sort of light grey which is reflecting the, uh, the sky. We're going to need a reasonable amount of these colours so I'll just put some water in my palette. I, I don't want to get rid of these greens yet because I may use them when I'm finishing off the, the white. Okay, so I'll mix two colours, each which will be a different tone. So this first one is plenty of burnt sienna and plenty of French ultramarine. So this is burnt sienna, French ultramarine. see how dark it looks there but really how light it really is so we need to add a lot more paint. This paint is sort of semi-fresh meaning it's it's only been in my palette for about a day or two and it hasn't had a chance to dry so I have to be a little bit more careful um, when I'm lifting it because I can end up picking up too much paint. Still needs more paint. I'll keep some of that over there as a lighter tone. Move some into a dry part of my palette and add more paint to that. Great. There we go. So let's start with these rocks in the distance. And again, because of the effect of atmosphere, your darkest tones are going to be in the foreground here, and maybe in these rocks here, and even in these darks here are going to be lighter than the darks I have here, so I just have to keep that in mind. And little flicks downwards to leave a broken edge at the water and that will read like foam. So I'm going to pick up a smaller brush, my size 8, just to help me create some of this uh, foam next to the rocks. And Yeah. 
and make sure you leave a broken edge because that's what gives the illusion of foam. Okay. This rock has lots of water on it so it's quite a bit lighter. I'll pick up this mixture and maybe add a bit more water to my brush. That's better. Now here, we've got this foam again, so all I'm going to do is just run some of this in there like that, and in a minute I'll lift most of that out. And then there's a little ledge, so just hint at that ledge, and now here, I'm going to grab a bit of green just to cool that down. This my green from the that I use for the water. Here we go. That's good. There. Then I'll do dilute that some more as so I Come back in here. Here, there we go. Then I'll clean my brush and I'm going to use it to lift some paint. Same here. And then I'll just soften this edge. That'll do. That's good. All right, let's move over to here. Again, it's, it's all in the edges. Just 
and create this sort of illusion of foam. And it's better to leave more spray than you need because you can always fill some of it in. I spent a lot of time tapping my brush into the towel to reduce moisture content in, in the brush. So I'm always thinking how wet is the brush, how wet is the paper, and making little adjustments because of that. Um, here we go. Pick up some of this darker paint and go back in and establish some of those dark marks. So this is sort of this is wet on wet, but with quite thick paint, so that the marks roughly stay where I put them. that. There. There we go. And now we look at these shapes and, and we're going to lighten the top part. So I do that by just cleaning my brush, squeezing most of the moisture out. You have to do it while the paint's quite wet so that it still and flows back in on itself, otherwise you'll, you leave all these um, brush marks. Good. I'll let that dry a little bit before I go in with some even thicker paint just to establish some of these darker marks on the um, within the the rock face. I'm going to add some more paint to this because these shapes are now moving closer to the foreground. So their dark, their tones will just naturally be darker. Leave little marks for foam, little flicks. 
There we go. This rock is quite a bit lighter because it's covered in water, so just start with a lighter tone. And just little quick dry brush strokes. There we go. Then drop in some dark shapes here and there. Now I'll clean the brush. So what I was doing there was just adding some thick paint in, in areas where I see some darker tones and then I just use the lifting technique to create some of these highlights. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. And you can see how I haven't had to keep going back into the water. I mixed enough paint to get me through 
um, the bulk of these shapes and that allows me to paint quite quickly. And these rocks are a bit lighter. There we go. Just soften some of these edges. I don't want this to be too bright because I want the brightest area to be up there. This should have been more of a broken edge. And when you're lifting, lift in the direction of the texture you're trying to create. Otherwise, you'll just, um, if you keep dabbing at it, you'll create more of a muddy, dull look, which is not what we're trying to achieve.
Great. So I think this area here is pretty right. Um, uh, now I have to be very quick and careful with these washes because when you're painting over dark shapes you can very easily lift the paint underneath. That's good enough. Now I'm going to mix a little puddle of um, very dark paint here. And we're going to go in and just establish some of these darker shapes. You don't have to follow what's in the photo um, completely because waves change. So now I'm just looking at the abstract design of this painting where I want some dark marks. I'm going to clean out part of my palette. I'm part of the skill in watercolors to know when use paint that's already in your mixing area and when you need to clean it. Just mixing some French ultramarine, a little bit of um, permanent rose and then just a tiny bit of burnt sienna to create a grey colour. that to throw in a bit of a shadow here and there. Even though it's overcast there's still light so they, you still get some shadow it's just not a very strong shadow. There. Good. 
and break up some of these white areas with a little bit of this weak shadow colour in them as well. Just breaking up this hard edge, this this edge is a bit too sharp for my liking so I'm going to break it up with a bit of thicker paint, there we go, and here So these little dabs are showing you know, gaps in the foam, showing the water through the other side. Just some water I've spilt here, I have to mop that up very gently so it doesn't lift all the paint. this patch here just with just a hint of water in my brush
and that'll help bring this this at the top of this wave forward a bit. These rocks would have a hint of a reflection. So just there, maybe here. You're not going to see a lot of it because of the all the the white foam, but you'd see some. Okay, and I think that will do us. Let's get a mat around this. I always put a mat around my paintings before I sign them. And usually what I do is I'll, I'm going to sign this now just to show you that it's finished. Having said that, I'll, over the next day or two I'll look at it and there's small adjustments that I'll make them. But I don't often end up making adjustments and in this case I'm pretty happy with the results so we'll see. There we go.